Today, we're going to talk splitters. We've done a ton of different splitters on our Camaro and cars around the shop. And to, we're going to try to let you guys know what we've found works and what doesn't and what the point of a splitter is. So this is kind of a stock air dam on a second gen Camaro. The concept of this is really to keep the airflow that's going under the car from hitting the front suspension cross member, which is what it did on the first gen, and building up a big high pressure bubble behind the radiator, which causes a bunch of trouble. High pressure bubble getting propagated behind the radiator coming off of your front cross member not only causes lift off the bottom of your hood, but it also can cause your radiator to stall and not have a pressure differential across it so it doesn't flow. So a lot of people think that it's strictly an aero thing, but in a lot of ways, a front splitter and proper front aero can help keep your car cool. The GTR here is a little bit more modern and you can see that the air dam is really low. There's nothing above it protruding for that high pressure to create lift on. And the grill opening is kind of segregated from the bottom so that the high pressure air feeds the radiator really well. So here you can see kind of a more of a basic design splitter. It's actually a wood splitter for a car that sees a lot of track duty. Um, it's got a custom front subframe in it. And if you look, the splitter's actually attached right to the bottom of the subframe which is perfect because you want the splitter to be the lowest part of the car, right? You want the air going underneath there to be accelerating and smooth and not have anything to run into that's going to disturb it or cause it to start building up high pressure. The other good thing is, you'll see we've got the lay down radiator getting built for this one so that all that high pressure air will go through the radiator and then out the vented hood. Roll. So when I originally built the Camaro in its current version, it didn't have a front splitter on it. And it was always the intent to build one, but we just hadn't had it completed. When I took it out and did some road race stuff and had it at higher speeds, you could really feel that the front of the car was not planted like it should be. And it kind of started to get a little bit sketchy the higher the speed got. And that's even with a ducted radiator. So it wasn't just the air going through the radiator causing the problem. It was actually air getting trapped under the front of the car, getting turbulent, having nowhere to go. So one of the biggest upgrades we made was when we started to go with some of the newer splitter designs. There were a few different iterations because we learned along the way. So I'll show you kind of the first one. All right, so once we started running a splitter on the car, we started with this material. It was actually kind of like a plastic core aluminum material that uh, they run on a lot of the TA2 cars and stuff like that. And it definitely was a big improvement, but one of the things that we noticed is that material is really flexible. And one of the things we don't like about that is if it's too flexible, the uh, the air doesn't actually produce downforce, it actually just deflects the splitter, which is not really what we want to do. So from this version, we went to a plate of aluminum, which still wasn't quite as rigid as we wanted. So we ended up with a version that was built out of carbon fiber that actually had a foam core material in it that was really stiff and it, we liked it a lot better. It worked really good. But when we went to the hill climb and we added the rear wing, we needed a lot more front splitter to help keep the car balanced. So what we went to there is an extension and big side plates. So once we added the rear wing, we knew we needed to get the center of pressure back forward because there was just going to be too much rear downforce and the smaller splitter that we had just wasn't going to be enough. So if you look here, we extended the front quite a bit with a carbon fiber extension and we added these large side plates. 
and large side plates just make the high pressure bubble a lot bigger in the front of the car and it gave us a ton more front downforce but the big problem is these large end plates caused a ton of drag so the efficiency of the aero was bad we got good grip we got good downforce but it completely murdered our high speed acceleration because it was just like pushing a semi truck through the air so we learned a lot and we ended up working with Paul at Virus Engineering to come up with what we're going to do for next year, which what the big purpose of the whole aero package for next year is, is worrying about L over D, which is lift over drag. You want to make a bunch of downforce with as little drag as possible. That's where your efficiency comes from on your aero. So stuff like this, really big downforce numbers but really bad drag numbers not very efficient so let me show you what we're doing to fix that now all right so this is a CAD model that Paul has been working on with us on the Camaro for a much more efficient splitter and he's a aero guru and when you get to the point where you want to go really fast you need to hire an aero guru where we scanned the whole car, did the CFD on it, and came up with the splitter that's gonna be ideal for the first gen Camaro. So, as you'll notice, these side plates are a lot more organic, like the air dam. We are incorporating a really complex and cool shaped dive plane. If you look at the end plates, they're very small. So we're not gonna get a bunch of drag off of the end plates this time because of there being a big trapped air bubble. Uh, another really cool thing to look at when you're looking at like race level developed aero is most people their front splitter is just like a piece of carbon or it's really thin. If you look at the really developed stuff that front edge is going to be a lot thicker. Another thing that you're going to notice that's always a good thing is that front edge is really rounded. And what that does is it makes it where it's less likely to stall the splitter. The splitter will be much more forgiving at different angles and different ride heights. And if it's going over bumps and things like that, it won't get upset and detached. So it's kind of interesting. Some people are like, oh, your splitters are gonna just look like blades. Well, that's a certain type of splitter. Really advanced ones sometimes don't look like that. It actually looks like the leading edge of a wing. Another thing that's really cool that I'll show you here is the bottom side. So the bottom side of the splitter is the business end. And you'll see that there's kind of a tunnel in the middle of the car and all these diffusers underneath the car. And that's actually where a lot of the downforce comes from, is from those diffusers and the tunnel shape underneath the car. So all really cool stuff it kind of shows you a bunch of different levels because when you're going to put a splitter on your car what you need to think about first is are you going to go try to get every tenth of a second at the track or are you just trying to make it better and cool better and what is your capability as far as fab goes because if your fab capabilities aren't super super high there's a lot of people that take a piece of plywood attach it so that the bottom edge of the plywood is even with the lowest plane on the car make that nice and level to ground at ride height and build an air dam around it and you're going to see a really big improvement is it going to be the same improvement as if you add splitter diffusers and end plates and do cfd and figure out exactly how everything needs to be no but there is one thing that you, you can see from here Maybe if you're going to get that piece of plywood, you should roll that front edge a little bit on the bottom and make it a little bit more forgiving. You should throw some wear blocks on it. So there's a lot of neat tricks you can do, even if you're doing it yourself. So now hopefully you understand why a splitter is on the front of a lot of cars, what it does, and what you should be looking for. You need to kind of think about the fact that there's multiple reasons why you add a splitter. And I bet you a bunch of you didn't realize one of them is cooling. So if we can help you guys out with anything, let us know, but just be creative, use the base principles, and don't be afraid to experiment.